a little idea how the system works. Um, the exhaust goes in here. You have temperature sensors that monitor the health of the inside of the filter. Then you have pressure sensors that look for excessive back pressure in case you have a, a, a soot or something happens in here that would plug up the exhaust. This is your oxidation catalyst here. This is your filter. Um, this picture isn't real good. We've got some filters out in the back you can see. But this one end of the tube is open here, one end of the tube is open here, and the exhaust gas is actually passed between the two tubes, and then the soot is trapped there. Then what will happen is, is the engine at a predetermined point will say, okay, I need to regenerate. I have to burn that soot off. So what we'll do, depending upon what the truck is doing at any given time, we'll have a, what's called an over-the-road regen. The throttle valve will choke off, which raises the exhaust temperature in this area here. If that's enough to raise the temperature, it'll run along and it'll just do a regen happy. If that's not quite enough heat, because we're trying to get the internal temperature up to 700 degrees C, but then we'll start dosing some fuel in here. Fuel hits the DOC catalyst here and actually turns into a, a flameless flamethrower, I guess you could call it. And it will actually burn off and for, the exhaust forces the soot down. Once it's completed its regen, uh, over the road regen could be, oh, probably somewhere in between 30 and 45 minutes, depending upon what you're doing. If you're just going 60 kilometers per hour down the road, flat road, about 45 minutes and over the road. Now, if you're running an operation where you don't have a high sustained exhaust temperature for a length of time, as in riding around in a dock or a city truck or something like that, what it'll do is the system will go through the first regen interval and it'll say, okay, I couldn't get there. So it'll go into the second de-regen interval. At that point, it will turn a regen light on and the driver has to do what's called a park regen puts it someplace that's away from people or whatever you want. He presses the button on the dashboard and then it will do a park regen. And that way there it chokes the air off more, puts more fuel in, and then raises the engine idle up. And then it regens the engine. That occurs, um, like I said, anywhere between 8 and 12 hours, depending upon what duty cycle you're running. Most of what we see in Australia, uh, we trigger on the amount of fuel used. Just talk about a little bit of our validation testing that we have done. Um, we test cold, we test hot, uh, we test altitude, which of course doesn't mean anything there. We check light loads, heavy loads, uh, we do an urban route. Uh, we just we try to test everything we can. That's why we're doing the RG testing on the DB16 right now, the SCR. Make sure it's compatible. This is winter test. Uh, Vic touched on that a little bit, how pretty it is to take pictures of things that are frozen. I will tell you, I do not participate in winter tests. I can get warm, but I don't, I hate cold. I, I, don't ask me why I live in Michigan. But, <laughs> then there's summer test. Here's the world's largest thermometer in beautiful Baker, California. There's right across the street from Alien Jerky. There's a crashed alien spaceship in the side of this building and they sell beef jerky in there. <laughs> you see it. <laughs> Interesting. This is uh, this is Eisenhower Pass. There's a uh, tunnel, Eisenhower Tunnel, that goes through the Rockies. Trucks aren't allowed to go through there, so you have to go up and down this pass here. So we do a lot of testing there. Uh, this is the exit in Prim, Nevada, right here. The freeway's back here, heading toward out toward the grade where we run. Uh, there are three casinos and an outlet mall, and that is the entire exit. It's the first casino across the border from California. All right, we talked, we talked about the DD-16s, and basically what we did is we took trucks that were equipped with DD-15s, and we uh, put the DD-16 engine in them, uh, and then we uh, put the single box. There's the SCR tank. <coughs> it looks like when it's finished. We ended up with three rectangular tanks on one side, and the one box unit takes in the SCR tank up a lot of space on the one frame rail. So that's what we put here, where you got this is the one box after treatment here, SCR tank. So it does take up some room, but part of what we do is we do cooling tests, we do noise pass by tests, 
we do what's called an EPQ test, which is called his end product qualification. We make sure that the water flows through it right and the oil drain and all that. So we, we test it like a brand new truck when we do a repower. The gentleman at Detroit Diesel Australia do that for us and they do a very, very good job of it. Uh, those ones that are out there running around are 600 horsepower 2050. Thank you. Any questions? Did I fill your mind with enough stuff for to forget about it?